Okay, so we're working on complex numbers here. And so consider if we're in Euler's form here of a complex number, e to the i theta. And if I'm going to multiply z1 times z2, well, I'm going to go r1 e to the i theta 1 times r2 e to the i theta 2. Now, if you recall from uh, algebra 1 probably, if I were to go 2x to the power 7 times 3x to the power of 4, well, you know you get 6x to the 11th. You add the exponents, you multiply the coefficients. Well, that means that I'm going to, the base here, here the base is x, here the base is e. I can multiply r1 times r2, e, and then I add my exponents together, which is i theta 1 plus i theta 2. And so it's r1, r2, e, I can pull out the i, and the angle is just theta 1 plus theta 2. So when we multiply complex numbers, we in essence add, similar to exponents, we add the angles. Similarly so, so if I consider that these two here, if I switch over our r1 cis theta 1 times r2 cis theta 2, if I'm going to multiply those, I could convert to Euler's form, and then if I convert these back, it ends up being r1 r2 cis theta 1 plus theta 2. And so whether you're in polar form or trigonometric form or Euler's form, we add the angles together to get our new uh, our new angle for our complex numbers. Similarly, so if I'm going to divide, imagine if I'm going to divide r1 e to the i theta 1 divided by r2 e to the i theta 2. This would be z1 divided by z2. Well, similar to the exponent rules, I end up dividing the coefficients, and it's e to the i theta 1 minus theta 2. All right, so let's do an actual example of this scenario and see what we can see. So <clears throat> if I'm given these two values, I'm going to convert to both Euler form and polar form. If I'm going to do Euler's form, I know that my r value is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared, so I get square root of 2. This is r1. And if I go tangent theta, 1 is equal to, well, 1 over 1. They're both positive. And I know that this is 45 or pi by 4. So z1 is equal to root 2 e to the i pi by 4 which is also equal to root 2 cis pi by 4. Similarly, if I do it with z2, z2, I know, oh, not z2, but z2, my r2 is going to be the square root of root 3 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is 3 plus 1 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. And if I do the tangent of theta 2, well, that's going to be negative 1 over root of 3. Well, if I rationalize this, I can see this is negative root 3 over 3. And I know that angle is going to be a pi by 6 reference angle. And if I think about my quadrant, Tangent's negative here, and so it's going to be negative pi by 6. And so z2 is simply 2e i negative pi by 6. I'll put a negative here. Or I could say 2 cis negative pi by 6. All right, so, so now I'm going to be part, I'm going to multiply them, and I'm going to do it in trig form. So using the cis component. So z1 times z2 will be root 2 cis pi by 4 times 2 cis negative pi by 6. And I'm going to multiply the coefficients, which is just 2 root 2 cis. And now I have to add these angles. Well, 
if I think common denominator, I get 3 pi over 12. If I multiply by 3 by 3, times 3 times 3, this one times 2 and times 2, which will give me negative, negative 2 pi over 12. Subtract that, I get a pi over 12. And so the angle is pi over 12. It doesn't say exact, but it might possibly someday say exact. And so you have to do the fractions and radians if it's dealing with radians. And so here is our trig form of this product. Similarly, if I go to dividing, I can divide it any way I want. I know this was pi by 4. And if I'm going to do this one, I might just do Euler's form just for a change. So this is root 2 over e to the pi over 4. It's positive, I remember. And 2e is an i, an i, a negative i pi by 6 from here. And so I get root 2 over 2, e to the i. And now again, I'm going to take my fraction 3 pi by 12, and I'm going to subtract the negative 2 pi by 12, and so I get a 5 pi by 12. And this is my complex number in Euler's form. So we can now multiply in Cartesian form, we can multiply in polar form, or we can multiply in Euler's form.